Hi. Hello, and welcome to Reading Through the Bible in a Year. I'm Eric. I'm Linda. Yeah. And, uh, I couldn't find the receipt for the laptop, so I don't know if I have a warranty on or not. Still can't get it working. Sad, I had it just about a year. So. And uh, it can't even switch on. I switch on and off button is not I'll working. Let's send it away and get fixed. Okay, we're reading on day 319, and we're reading in Ezekiel chapters 1 and 2. And Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 19. All right, okay. So it's your turn to read. It is. I started last night. Which means it's my turn to pray. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you that we can surrender our life to you and trust you to lead our days, our decisions, our every step. Thank you for loving us so well. You've blessed us in our coming and our going. And uh, you've blessed us in all things that pertain to life and mostly important. you bless us by letting us feel and your closeness and know and understand your love. We thank you for the many healings you're doing in those we pray for. Day by day, moment by moment, each day, each one. Reporting better and better news of your work in your life. Thank you so much for that. You blessed us these years with a wonderful family and church family and friends, giving us a warm home and all the provisions we need. We do not deserve these blessings any more than anybody on the face of this earth, but you have blessed us and we are aware that we thank you. We ask Almighty God that all who call on your name will experience and know and be able to testify to your goodness. We pray as we read your word that we have understanding. When we see the consequence on those who do not serve you, help us to be warned and to be serious about our relationship with you and pursuing an attitude and life of righteousness. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's get started in chapter 1 of Ezekiel. A vision of four figures. Now it came about in the thirteenth year, on the fifth day of the fourth month, while I was by the river Chabar among the exiles, the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of blood. On the fifth of the month, in the fifth year of King Jehoiachin's exile, the word of the Lord came expressly to Ezekiel the priest, son of Buzai, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chabar, and there the hand of the Lord came upon him. Verse 4. I looked and saw a windy storm approaching from the north, and a huge cloud with flashing fire, blowing brightly all around with the color of gleaming amber from within the fire. Inside there appeared to be four living creatures that looked like human beings, but each one had four faces and four wings. Their legs were straight, with feet like calves' hooves. They glittered like burnished bronze. Beneath their wings they had human hands on their four sides. The four of them had faces and wings as follows. They touched one another with their wings. They did not turn when they moved, but each one moved straight forward. As for the appearance of their faces, they had human faces in front. Each of the four had a lion's face on the right. Each of the four had a bull's face on the left and each of the four had an eagle's face towards the rear. Thus they faced, thus their faces. As for the wings, each had two that stretched upward and joined those of others, and two more that covered their bodies. Each living creature moved in the direction of any of its faces. In whichever direction the spirit wanted to go, they went, without turning as they moved. Thus the appearance of the living creatures. Mind in chapter 15. Okay. With them was something like that looked like fiery coals burning the way torches do, with a fire flashing here and there between the living creatures. The fire had no bra- had a brilliance, and out of the fire went lightning. The living creatures kept speeding here and there like flashes of lightning. Verse 15. It's quite picture, quite visual. Now, as I looked at the living beings, behold, there was one wheel on the earth beside the living beings, for each of the four of them. The appearance of the wheels and the workmanship was like sparkling B-E-R-Y-L, barrel, and all four of them had the same form. 
their appearance and workmanship being as if one wheel were <coughs> in another. Wherever they moved, they moved in any of the four directions without turning as they moved. And as for their rims, they were lofty and awesome, and the rims of all four of them were full of eyes round about. And whenever the living beings moved, the wheels moved with them. And whenever the living beings rose from the earth, the wheels also rose. Wherever the spirit was about to go, they would go in that direction, and the wheel rose close behind them, for the spirit of the living being was in the wheels. Whenever these those went, these went. And wherever those stood still, these stood still. And whenever those rose from the earth, the whole wheel rose close beside them, for the spirit of the living being was in the wheels. Verse 22, Vision of di Divine Glory. Over the heads of the living creature was what appeared to be a dome glittering like ice. It was awesome, spread out over their heads, above them. Under the dome each had a pair of wings spread out straight towards those of the other, and each had a pair with, which covered his body. I heard the sound of their wings when they moved. It was like the sound of rushing water, like the voice of Shaddai, like the noise of a tumultuous crowd or army. When they stopped, they lowered their wings. Whenever there was a sound from above the dome over their heads, they stopped and lowered their wings. Above the dome that was over their heads was something like a throne that looked like a sapphire. On it, above it, was what appeared to be a person. I saw what looked like gleaming amber-colored fire radiating from what appeared to be his waist upward. Downward from what appeared to be his waist, I saw what looked like fire giving a brilliant light all around him. This brilliance around him looked like a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day. This was how the appearance of the glory of Adonai looked. When I saw it, I fell on my face, and I heard the voice of someone speaking. Chapter 2 Chapter 2, The Prophet's Call Then he said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, that I may speak with you. And as he spoke to me, the Spirit entered me, and set me on my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. And then he said to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the son of Israel, sons of Israel, to rebellious people who have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. And I am sending you to them who are stubborn and obstinate children. And you shall say to them, Thus saith the Lord God. As for them, whether they listen or not, for there are a, they are a rebellious house, and they will know that a prophet has been among them. And you, son of man, neither fear them nor fear their thorns. Are, um, pardon me, their words, those thistles and thorns are with you, and you sit on scorpions. Neither fear their words nor be dismayed at their presence, for they are a guy's house. But you shall speak my words to them, whether they listen or not, for they are rebellious. Do you want me to finish it? I know she's going to change the New Testament. Yeah, I understand. Now, you, son of man, listen to what I am speaking to you. Do not be rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I am giving you. Then I looked, and behold, the hand was extended to me, and lo, a scroll was in it. And when he spread it out before me, it was written on the front and the back. Written on it were lamentations, mournings, and woes. And we heard a lot of them in the previous chapter. Mm -hmm. So now we're in the New Testament. Book. Okay, we're now in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 19. Mm -hmm. Trusting is being confident of what we hope for, convinced about things we do not see. It was for thus that Scripture attested the merit of the people of old. By trusting, we understood what the universe was created, that the universe was created through a spoken word of God, so that what is seen did not come into being out of existing phenomena. By trusting, uh, evil offered a greater sacrifice than oh, pardon me, Cain. Abel offered up a greater sacrifice than Cain. Because of this, he was attested to righteousness, with God giving him this testimony on the ground of his gift, through giving trusted. Though having trusted, he still continued to speak, even though he is dead. 
Did I get that right? Yeah. Jeremy, this one? Your side. Yeah, it's a little different here. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he could, he should not see death, and he was not found because God took him up. For he obtained the witness that before he be, his being taken up, he was pleasing to God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reminder of those who seek him. That's a very interesting verse of scripture. Mm -hmm. We must, for he who comes to God must believe that he is God. By faith, Noah, being warned by God about things not yet seen, in, rever in res reverse prepared an ark for the salvation of his household, by which he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed by going out to a place which he was to receive for inheritance, and he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith he lived as an alien in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, dwelling in tents, which Isaac and Jacob fellow heirs of the same promise. For he was looking for the city which has foundations, whose architect, or an architect and builder is God. Verse 11. Verse 11. Oh, tragedy was By faith, even Sarah herself received the ability to conceive, even beyond the proper time of life, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, also, there was born out of one man, and him as good as dead, at that as many descendants as the stars of heaven, in number, and innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. All these did in faith, without receiving a promise, but having seen them and having welcomed them from a distance, and having confessed that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For those who say such things make it clear that they are seeking a country of their own. And indeed, if they had been thinking of that, that country from which they went out, they would have opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. How far do we leave? Nineteen. During the rest, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promise was offering up his only begotten son. It was he to whom it was said, In Isaac your descendants shall be called. He considered that God is able to raise men even from the dead, from which he also received him back as a type. Very good. So, that is so wonderful, the encouraging. Um, it's a nice change when we read the New Testament to see God's grace and faith and, and mm -hmm. more of an interaction between us via the Holy Spirit. What a difference um, yeah. we have yeah. in our relationship to God and understanding. Thank you once again for being faithful and seeking God and reading His Word. And It's not always easy to understand, and it's especially not easy to read the Old Testament prophetic books when it talks about the wickedness of man and the judgment of God on them. It's some, some pretty sad and sorry stuff. And when we turn on the radio or the TV and we hear about it on the news, that it's so relevant today, all that disaster and stuff happening. You can't help but wonder, you know, what part man plays in bringing disaster on themselves. And when you read the Old Testament, it really makes you wonder. So it's our desire that everyone who watches and seeks God will come to know Him and submit to Him in faithfulness and receive every good blessing that's promised in the Word of God. And I tell you, we've experienced the goodness of God. So we know that God is good, and you can know that too. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night.